guys, it's me. Today is June Monday, June 27th, and I'm trying to keep this video kind of short. I thought I would go ahead and do it. It's kind of early. Um, thought I would do it while it's still relatively quiet in the house. I think my daughter's still back in her room. Um, I know it's been a couple of weeks since she saw me, and. I don't say there's a reason for it. I mean, there's always a reason, obviously. But last week, I really, I wasn't in much of a stitchy mood, and I know I hadn't gotten a lot of progress on anything. Um, and so I really, I really didn't feel up to making a video. And last week, I was kind of busy a lot most of the day, and just didn't really, um, feel up to doing a video, um, and I know that I said I was, for June being the month of wine and whips and stitch mania, I know I said that I was going to work on, primarily I was going to work on, um, Pokemon and Lost Boys, and I think what happened with my stitchy bug is it got kind of sick. Um, it didn't disappear completely, but it got kind of sick. Um, because I was, I had that kind of restriction of, well, I need to be working on Pokemon and Lost Boys more as much as possible, um, in June. And so, and I really didn't, <clears throat> and having that restriction, it made me not want to stitch on anything, um, on anything that I had, and if I did want to stitch on something else, I felt bad because I was I wasn't sticking to my plan of working on one of those two other projects, and I said, you know what, this this wine and whips thing is not working. <coughs> you know I. I can't do this. This is why I don't have a rotation. I don't like the restriction. Um, but one day I just told myself, you know what? Screw wine and whips. Just work on whatever you want to. You know, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm 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 done with wine and whips for this, this year. Um, and I guess you could say all of my pattern, all of, well, most of my projects make me wine in some way. Um. So I guess that's part of, I guess I could still do it, but, um, my plan with do, working on those two projects just went out the window because I didn't like the restriction and it was putting pressure on myself to work, to keep working on those two projects. And I'll keep working on them regardless. I work on them when I get a chance to, when I feel like it. But having that pressure of, of on myself just working on those two projects was not, was, it was affecting my overall s desire to stitch. And from the moment I said, screw it, I'm not doing line lips anymore, just work on whatever the hell you want to work on. From that moment, I pretty much, it started to come back, um, but, and I definitely felt so much freer of that pressure and so I mean I did work I did work on Pokemon you know over the last couple of weeks and this was probably earlier this week that you know I told myself I'm not doing line lips anymore I'm not sticking to that anymore um but I, I have worked a little bit on Pokemon and since you last saw it and I'll show it today in the video, obviously, it's been a couple of weeks since I did a video, so there's got to be progress on something, right? Yeah, got to be progress on something. Um, and I got a couple things in, uh, a little bit of haul from different places that I want to show you, um, and part of the reason I haven't gotten as much stitching done is I started trying to read again. Yeah. I haven't read in a long time, and I'm trying to read. So I had went to um, Barnes and Noble 
with the intention of getting stitchy magazines. But when I see these um, British stitching mag magazines in the stores, when I see them, yeah, they're great. I'm sure they're great and everything. But I've noticed that, especially with World of Cross Stitching, a lot of their designs are very cutesy. And that's, that's fine every once in a while, but it's just not me all the time. Um, and I don't want to get a whole magazine of cutesy patterns. Um, and then the other ones, they were okay. Um, what they show on the cover, obviously, is, is there's a lot more inside, but um, obviously then with them being stored in plastic, with plastic wrap stuff, you know, you can't exactly open the magazine up to look through it. So, um, but I am bidding on a couple of them on Listio. Um, so, I went to Barnes and Noble with the intention of getting some stitching magazines. Didn't get any stitching magazines. Because I, I looked through them, just wasn't really wowed by anything that I saw. And so, kind of wandered over to the mystery section. And I had a couple more books picked out, but I ended up walking away with just two. I had to, and they were, they were only like six bucks each, so, um, they were on clearance. And the funny thing is, one of them, I had picked up the paperback, um, off the shelf, and then I was walking around later. The paperback was nine ninety nine, and I was walking around, and noticed they had, the tables were like five ninety nine, five ninety eight and up. So I was looking on there, and they had the same novel. In hardback for five ninety eight, so I'm like, duh, really? Why would I get the paperback when I can get the hardback for six bucks, four four bucks cheaper? So I did that. Um, and I'll show you too in a minute. Um, but let me get into the stitchy stuff. I just wanted to kind of explain where I was at last week and why I didn't show up last week, why I wasn't around. Um, that was because my I was having a hard time with my stitchy bug, and I actually thought I tried to start something new, and I'm not impressed with it. I'll show it to you, but it, I'm not impressed with it. I this one project is giving me fits. I'm just gonna have to wait until I can get a hand dyed fabric and get some silks, with like the variegated silks. That's what I really want to do with this, and I have yet to get the stuff for it, and it's dra it's dragging on for almost a year now that I've been wanting to do this. And you would think that I would have had this stuff by now, but I keep putting it off. Because I've never worked with silks before. I've never worked with, worked with specialty flosses before. But I really want to do that with this particular project, and I'll, I'll, I'll get into it. Um, so yeah. Wine and Whips, officially my plan for Wine and Whips that I had set out at the beginning of this month is no more. It's dead. It's dead in the water. Um, but that doesn't mean that I haven't worked anything, worked on anything. And if anything, it's given me the freedom to actually work on other stuff. So, other stuff got worked on. Um, so let me get into the whips. I'll put my bag up here. how full this bag has gotten. This is my stitchy bag. Okay. I'm just going to start pulling out items. First we have the, the little tea kettle. Cricut Collection tea kettle. Uh, I am going to... I'll insert a picture. If I can find it, I'll insert a picture of where I was at last time. But it's pretty much easy to tell you where I was at. And yeah, this is still on the on the, on the frame. On the boot. And I did notice I forgot a couple of gray stitches. This is where I'm at now. Um, just did a lot of the white. I don't know if you can tell it. There's white in there. 
all these white stitches in between the gray the, the white the part of the checkerboard is what I did that's all I did I think yeah because I had finished up the gray last time and I had did all the white in the spout in, the, in between the gray um, and I think I had did like one block um, of the white and so I did more of the white and you can see I was still working on it. I did leave out, I did forget a couple of gray stitches in here. These two sides right here. So I gotta go back and do those. But that's where I'm at on that. Um, and my little aerial needle minder that I think I got from Minding My Minders before. So, very pretty. This is actually the second one I had to get. Because the first one came apart. I think my cat ate the picture. Because it was just like kind of stuck on. It's like a sticker on in the middle of this um, minder thing right here. And I think the sticker part came off and my cat ate it. I don't know what she did with it. So I had to order another one. And it started coming apart. It started coming off again. Um... And so I just took some super glue and glued it on. It's all good. So, um, that's all for that one. That is first whip. Told you. Yeah, I just in the bag. Um, oh yeah, my hair. I don't know if anybody's noticed it. I don't know if you can even tell. It's not black. I, I did color it. It's all one color now. See? No more grace. No more grace. It's all the same color. Remember this down here was like lighter because I had, when my, when my hair was real short a couple years ago, I had colored it like dark, dark purple and it faded and I never cut it after that so it was like the lighter version Eight hundred number, I ain't worrying about that but yeah, I um I colored it um, Monday, it's past Monday a week ago and it's all one color now two thumbs up um, and if you need to know what I used you can message me. <sighs> Ironically, I didn't get anything done on Save the Stitches. I need to get something, I need to get some more progress on that. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking through my stuff to see what I worked on. Next one is going to be the Love and Faithfulness. And I think I'm going to finish this one up today. The Love and Faithfulness uh, by Little House Needleworks. And let me show you where I was at last time. And I was working on this yesterday and I was trying to get it done. Put this one back. And here is where it's at today. Oops, just have to wait a little bit. That's where I got yesterday. Um, basically, um, what I did yesterday when I worked on it was I finished this, did all this down here, finished this up. Um, I think I did the E, the R, B, S, yeah, R, B, S, 3.3. And the three hearts here. Um, did these two little flower buds. And then um, this l lighter part down here of this flower because there's two colors in that flower. Okay, so yeah. so that, that, that lighter part right there, that's what I did. And then that little thing right there. 
So I think I can finish this up today. All that's left is um, the other side over here, like this. And there's a vine running through it of this brown right here. Um, and then there's some stitches, like zigzag stitches um, down here. And then the, the border that goes all the way around. The solid, like, one stitch all the way around border that goes all the way around. Yeah. Apparently I'm repeating myself. That's where it's at today, um, and like I said, I'll probably be able to get it done today, and my little angel needle minder. If you're wondering what this is on, Belgium linen, 28 count. Not the most fun thing to work on, I warn everybody, this is not the most fun thing to work on. Sure, it looks good, it looks very old, and antique key. What do you call it? Um, heirloom. That's what I was looking for. Heirloom. But it looks like an heirloom. The border will come probably right about here. It's not that far above the the vine. And it goes down. So. Yeah. So that will get finished today. I'm going to work on it finish it up, it will take a few hours, and I can be done with it, and have another finish on my belt. I wanted to work on this, and finish it up before I did the video, but the yeah, I wasn't up to it when I woke up this morning. Um, the next one I want to show you... I did do a little bit of on ice cream ladies. Um, this is my soda stitch pattern. And this is what the whole thing looks like. And this is the girl I'm working on right now in the middle. And I think I'm going to have to start folding my. Um, my pattern up a different way because I've noticed and I'll show you when I get to it first of all let me insert a picture of where I was at last time you saw it Is where she's at today. Um, I did go ahead and finish up the dark pink in the hair. Um, did more on the strawberry. The all the middle stitches, all the stitches in the strawberry are pretty much done. Um, all that's left to do in the strawberry is the little greenery at the top, the stem part, and the leaf. Um, finished up the whipped cream. Uh, the colors in the whipped cream. No, actually, I take that back. There's a couple colors. There's like a couple of stitches in a slightly darker. I think it's a slightly darker blue um, in here. And did a little bit more on this side. Did a little bit more in the um, what you call it? The frame around like this little bit of the white. And then I did some of the banner down here at the bottom. I was back to white. So that's what's got done on her. And this is, see, I can see, you can see this Berkeley real good. This is the um, Crystal Aerial Cash Out by Picture This Plus in my Quilty Blingy Quilt Needle Minder from Minding My Minders. I haven't ordered any from the new incarnation of Minding My Minders since um, the other lady took it on. Sorry. Oh, what I was going to show you is. Oh, back up again. What I was going to show you was <clears throat> I've noticed um, the. Like, there's. 
there's a couple of white stitches like right in her eyes right here and I've noticed that they're not like bright white anymore I think it's because when I fold it up you know it, it kind of folds in half like that I think some of this darker pink was slightly rubbing off on it so I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna have to start folding it up a different way like in thirds um, so that it doesn't touch it's a big piece of fabric big old big old piece of fabric so fold it up like this and then like this and then I can fold it in half And then you see the back of it. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm gonna have to do because I don't want the, the other colors to start rubbing off on the white. I'm very particular about how I put this stuff back in. more for my projects. And I need to order one of um three out threads, Trisha. I need to order one of her um peekaboo bags. They're so cute. I want one. Um I worked a little bit um on Bluebell Fairy, not much, because I can only do a few stitches on her at a time, um, in case you forget, this is what she looks like, give or take, yeah, might be able to see it better like that, and I can insert a picture of where I was at last time. And let me get it all nice and folded up here so you can see. And this is where I'm at today. It was folded the wrong way. I was holding it the wrong way. Um, I tackled one of the blended threads. Can you tell? I can't tell. They're in here somewhere. They're... Yeah. That's, what, that's where it's at right now. Um, did some over here. Actually, you can from, from back here. You can kind of can tell this little row up here at the top um, is the blended thread and I'm trying to think that's a little bit it's not much but that's where she's at today yeah, a little bit. you can tell it's like a little bit over here on this side um, and then these little stitches over here on the side is uh, a blended thread it is The white, the what I was working before is white. Obviously, it's thirty-eight sixty-five. And the blended thread that I was working on Sorry, getting there. The blended thread that I was working on is thirty-eight six thirty-eight sixty-five and thirty-seven fifty-six. Well then on the outer part of these, there's more that's mixed in is just the thirty seven fifty six. There's another there's another symbol that's just the thirty seven fifty six, so it's kind of blending in. See what they did there? So yeah. That's a blended thread, it's thirty eight uh, sixty five and thirty seven fifty six. 
which is a very, 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 very light blue. Okay. Seven fifty six, baby blue, ultra very light, baby blue. Which yeah, I doubt you're gonna be able to tell this. Why did I have to take back up? Oh, no, that's white. I think. Crap. That's right. You're not going to be able to say it. It's ultra, ultra, ultra very light baby blue. Mixed with the uh, white. I can't tell if that's white or if that's baby blue. Oops. So that's that one, and then my little. Um, hydrangea needle minder from Mighty Man Minders. No. Gina's is Unique Boutique. That's where I got it from. And I actually had to, sorry Gina, but I had to super glue the, um, the magnet back on because it came off. But it's all good. I like the hydrangea. And this is the um, as you wish from Under the Sea Fabrics and the uh, Jobelin 32 count Jobelin just got a uh, notification on my laptop that Queen of Starts tagged me in a post on the No Name Needle Minders Facebook page, which is 99.99% that she just tagged me in the post to let you know that she's shipping out my order today. So I'm happy about that. That should be in by next by next video. But I can show you those. Um, and finally, I think finally. Yeah, I think finally. I did do a little bit on um, Pokemon. I think I'm forgetting something. I'm forgetting a. Yeah, like I'm forgetting a whip or something. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to show you the. Um, yeah, that's what it was. I was going to show you the other thing I worked on. The other thing that I started. The one that I'm not happy with. Uh, the Pokemon, it's a very large Pokemon pattern, I've showed it before, um, don't feel like showing it this video, so I'm not, um, I can show you where I was at last time you saw it. Obviously, I did a little bit more here on the wings. Let's see. Fast forward to where I actually worked at. I did a little bit more on the wings here in the green. And then this right here is kind of like around his neck. So the head is like down here. something like that. So that's pretty much all I did and then one yellow square. 
that's all I did. Not a lot on him. He's coming along. This stuff, these little characters, I feel like they take forever to do because they're, it's like a stitches, a few stitches here, a few stitches there. They're, they're, there's a lot of colors in these, in these little critters. This right here is already one, two, three. This is, this is three colors here. There is one more green, I believe. No. This is three colors here of the green. Um, and then when you start getting into the red part of the wing, that's another three or four colors just in the red. So, and there's actually some black stitches around here too to kind of intermix with the dark green. Yeah, that's dark green, that's not black. So, that's what I got done for fun. So it's, it's a little bit at a time. Oh no, that was a stretch. Yeah, I carried because I didn't feel like... I didn't feel like cutting the thread just for like five or six stitches, I think. Four stitches. Yeah. Yeah, I finished up. I had finished up here. These like couple of light green stitches here, and I didn't feel like ending it. So then there's like four stitches in that color over here, and I just like screw it. I'm just gonna carry it. There'll be more stitches in between there, so they'll catch them. So they'll catch it. I mean, it'll it'll go under the other stitches. So that was all in Pokemon. Not much, a little bit, not much. And believe it or not, this was me working on it all day at work one day. And that was the actually the day that I decided to not that I wasn't gonna do the wine and lips anymore. That was actually like Tuesday last week I think. I was like, you know what, I'm not even gonna worry about wine and lips. I'm just gonna work on what I feel like working on. I'm kind of done trying to do it. I I worked a little bit on Lost Boys, um a couple weeks ago when you saw me working on it when I was doing the tagathon video that was the only time I worked on Lost Boys and it wasn't a lot of progress and it's way over there and I don't feel like showing it right now so I will definitely show it next video I'm gonna try to get some done on it this weekend this weekend this week if I can maybe a little bit today if I can but, but we'll see no promises. Um, and then finally we have the thing that I tried to start. Um, and I've had the hardest time with this. It's ridiculous. Start it. I tried to start the His Name is Jesus one. I went and got some fabric. I went and got some fabric and from Joanne one day along with some other things I'll show you. And I'm still not happy with it. I actually think I got this for something else. But, some, but I couldn't. No, I did get it for this. It's going to be kind of hard to show what it's supposed to look like because there is a, a charter way, but so many people do it in their own colors that it's really, you can do it your own. It's, it's up to you whatever colors you want to do it. This is the pattern, I will show you this, this is the pattern way back here. This is the same pattern that I did for my mom 
um, back last year. And I, I picked out these three colors at Joanne because I wanted kind of, I wanted a, like a vintage look. Let's see if I can show this a little bit better. Yeah, let's see the pattern of this. This is a very dark purple, dark plum color. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see that. And then there's the, this color, it's very light. And then this color is the blue. Um, but I'm still not happy with it. What I got was the fabric go. So I still have the other half of the fabric in here. Somewhere. Just, I just saw it. Where did it go? Yeah. I got this. The 28 even weave. 28 count even weave. In antique white. It's very, it's very light oatmealing. Um, got that at Joanne. This was my, this is my start on it. And I'm still not happy with it. I'm not happy with it. I really am not. What I started on was the dark purple. If you can see, it's really going to be really hard to see this dark purple. It's really darker than my shirt. Let's put it that way. That's what I got done on it. It's not that it looks bad. I'm, I'm admitting that. It doesn't look bad. But it's not what I want. I'm just not feeling it. I don't know. It looks nice. It really does. It looks really nice. But it's just not... Not what's in my head that I want to do for this pattern. So I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. The fabric is not bad. Colors themselves are not bad. It's 154 is 154 is dark purple. 3041 is the lighter kind of antiquey pur uh, purple mauvey color, and then 930 is the dark like vintage blue color. The colors aren't bad. The colors I love the colors. I love these colors. I just wish I could get something like these in silks. And if anybody can help me out on where to get some similar colors in silks, let me know. Leave a comment. Let me know. Because in my head, I want to do this on a hand dyed with silks, and I'm not going to be happy until then. It's just not going to be satisfying to me. That's all my lips, and that's really all I did. But it's a lot considering I went into the week thinking, oh, I have to work on Pokemon, I, I have to work on Pokemon, I have to work on Lost Boys, and then just throwing all, all that out the window, so, um, give me two minutes to get all this back in my bag, and I'll be right back, okay, I'm back, um, sorry, I didn't want to have to make y'all sit through that, I did leave the love and faithfulness out because I do want to finish that up today. Uh, and hopefully I can get some work done on it while this video is uploading. Cause I gotta leave for about 
about two o'clock or so. Um, I gotta go back up to not go to work, but I gotta go back up to the mall that I work at to pick up my boyfriend's um, cookie cake that I ordered because it's his birthday today. And I think I maybe want to try to spend some time with him today, huh? So, first the non-stitchy stuff that I got. And I went to Barnes & Noble with the intention of getting some stitchy magazines that didn't happen. I ended up picking up a couple of books. I got, and thanks to Doctor Who, I am now curious about Agatha Christie's books. I got one that came out, it has her name on it. I got this one, and yes, I know Agatha Christie herself did not write this. I think I may want to hold off. I did read through the first chapter of this, and the main guy, or Hercule, what is his name? Hercule Poirot. Um, He's in a cafe. He's retired, apparently. Um, he's in a cafe, and in runs this mysterious woman, and she says she's in danger, but she doesn't really want to talk about it. And she runs out, and that's pretty much it. And so, I think I may want to hold off on reading reading any more of this because I maybe want to read some of the Agatha Christie's actual novels with him in it before I get into this new person. Um, this was written by, I know the thing's covering it, um, Sophie Hanna. Uh, Sophie Hanna. Um, it was written by a lady, by her, um, kind of in the style of Slash with the original character of Hercule Poirot. And I'm sorry if I'm saying his name wrong. I don't know. This is how I say it. So. Uh. Can't tell what the original price was. The original price was $25.99, but it was on the table marked down to $5.98. Um. I'm going to give you the little blurb that it has over here. Uh, I'm a dead woman, or I shall be soon. Hercule Perrault's quiet supper in a London coffee house is interrupted when a young woman confides to him that she is about to be murdered. She is terrified, but begs Perrault not to find and punish her killer. When she is dead, she insists justice will have been done. Later that night, Perrault learns that three guests at a fashionable London hotel have been murdered and a monogrammed cufflink has been placed in each one's mouth. Could there be a connection with the frightened woman? While Perot struggles to put together the bizarre pieces of the puzzle, the murderer prepares another hotel bedroom for a fourth victim. Since the publication of Agatha Christie's first novel in 1920, more than two billion copies of her books have been sold around the globe. Diabolically clever, packed with style and wit, The Monogram Murders is a splendid addition to the world's biggest best-selling series. was that one. I'm going to hold off on reading that one. And yes, I did get interested in her from watching Doctor Who, that one episode with uh, uh, number 10 and Donna Noble, where they went to the 20s and Agatha Christie was there and then there was some murders that involved a wasp, a huge wasp. Um, and the second book I got was from Kathy Reichs. She's one of my favorite authors. Um, this is, um, she, she writes the novels based on the same character um, that is in the TV series Bones. Same character, same main character anyway, not, uh, not Silly Booth, 
but she has a couple of other um, detectives that she works with in there. And I especially got interested in her books. Um, she goes back and forth just like Kathy writes herself. She's an actual um, forensic anthropologist, um, an anthropologist who works, who does, who sometimes works with police to do forensics on um, bodies, especially when they've been too far decomposed, like you know, with bones and stuff. So um, it's called Bones Never Lie, and I got through. With this one also, I think I got to the first chapter, or two, maybe. I think the first chapter. No, I got through three chapters. It's bad when you can't remember how much you read. So, um, this is the same main character, Temperance Brennan. Um, and I got really interested in her books because she, not only is it the same character as Bones, which I was really into the character itself, herself, but she also, just like Kathy Reich, she goes between working with the police in Canada, uh, French, can French Canada, to working with the police in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is the area where I'm from, just outside of Charlotte. So um, it's very interesting to me, especially when she talks about areas in Charlotte that I am familiar with. I don't know every single area of Charlotte, but I am very familiar with some of the areas, um, the boulevards and the highways and some of the roads and areas um, in Charlotte. Um, and this is one of her books. Uh, this is one of the ones in Charlotte, in North Carolina. So, uh, and this one, she's one of my favorite authors. I love her to death. Um, and this one is... Uh, unexpectedly called in to the Charlotte PD's cold case unit, Dr. Temperance Brenner, Brennan wonders why she's been asked to meet with a homicide cop who's a long way from his own jurisdiction. Hmm. <coughs> the shocking answer, two child murders separated by thousands of miles have one thing in common, the killer. Years ago, Anique Palmer Lowe kidnapped and murdered a string of girls in Canada, then narrowly eluded capture. It was a devastating defeat for her pursuers, Brennan and police detective Andrew Ryan. Now, as if summoned from their nightmares, Palmer Lowe has resurfaced in the United States, linked to victims in Vermont and North Carolina. When another child is snatched, the reign of terror promises to continue unless Ryan can rise to the challenge and make good on her second chance to stop the psychopath. But Brennan will have to draw her bitter ex-partner out of exile, keep the local police and feds from one another's throats, and face more than just her own demons as she stalks the deadliest of predators in the darkest depths of madness. In Bones Never Lie, Kathy Reichs never fails to satisfy readers looking for psychological suspense that's more than skin deep. So, um, kind of like a whodunit, but it's forensically, forensics, like a forensic murder mystery so and I love I love this author she's one of my favorites I just about got um, another novel from another one of my favorite authors but I had to whittle down my selections because of cost I was trying to keep my uh, uh, total down I couldn't spend a whole lot in there um, uh, but what I got at Joanne's that day was not really impressive. I just got some more fabric. I got that fabric that you saw. And then I got this. It's been crushed by now. A little 18 count Ada. I don't even remember what I got this for, to be honest. I think I got this to do... The Rise and Shine paid on. It was either Rise and Shine or it was the Targus one. But I can't remember which one I got it for, which one I got it for. I've been figuring it out. And I've done all the measurements for for the Targus one. Wait a 
done all the measurements for the TARDIS one, but not for the uh, Rise and Shine. This is 18 count, and it's a 15 by 18. So it wasn't for this one. On an 18 count, the TARDIS one would be um, just under 12 by 18. So it wasn't for this one. So I'm thinking it was probably for the, ri the, the Rise and Shine Hade. Mm. Maybe. Or not. I don't know. I got it for something. I guess I'll figure it out later. Huh. Got that. And the flosses for that His Name is Jesus one that you saw and the fabric for it. Uh, I got the Loran project cards because I need to organize the floss for the um, Antique Teddies kit. That I had thought about starting the other day, but I looked at the mess of floss and I'm like, uh, no, not right now. It needs organizing. So that's what these are for. And each one of these has 20, 20 spots on it. And then you have the magnet at the top, which is supposed to be for your needle. But regardless. Hmm. Made in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Been there, I've been through there. Um, and then I got the yeah, there's none in here right now, but I got some the DMC numbers so I could actually start rebobinating my uh, my set. And I think what I'm going to try to do if I can, I'm trying to keep I want to do like all the 100s in the same color like all all the 100s like in the in the solid white and then i'm going to do like all the 200s in another color 300s in another color and <clears throat> so on and so forth and like alternate that way okay <sighs> sorry little phone call i had to take um what was i oh yeah um but yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm starting to rebobinate my, um, my set, my DMC set. Uh, now all the fun stuff. Now the fun stuff. First of all, I don't know if I showed this. I got the cross stitch. This is, I got this a couple weeks ago. Like, right after I did my last video, like the next day, I think. So, the next issue, the August 2016 issue of Just Cross Stitch. And I will do a quick flip through. Nothing in here that really stands out to me. Uh, I think I saw somebody the other day wanting to do this one. This is Road Trip. Cute little camper pictures. Uh... There's a thing here for October 6th through the 8th, Needlework Galleria, uh, held at the Embassy Suites in St. Charles, Missouri, on Facebook slash Needlework Galleria or NeedleworkGalleria.com. Just thought I wanted, but just thought I should mention it. Um, sail into Summer, pattern that they've put onto a, um, to a bag. Building sand castles. Caribbean boat. That's okay, I guess. I'm not huge into like boats and stuff like that, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of cute. It's very cross stitchy. 
flamingo. This is the one on the cover. Then we have a coral pillow. Really? I'm not sure if this is even worth cross stitch or not. And it's literally like three colors. Summer Farm Maiden, little sampler style um, prim. And they've done it as a wall hanging. Hmm. Here's something cool. It's not a, a pattern, but it's um, an advertisement for something on the Krennic website. You know, there's no the, the stitch of stitch of flag pins. I think that's pretty cool. You order it through. This is by in stores or online. Um, Choose from the United States, England, Australia, Canada, France, Italy, Scotland, Ireland, Germany, or Russia. And their full kits includes cranks, threads, needle, perforated paper, perforated paper, really? Pen, pen. Uh, stitching in the Heartland in Branson, Missouri. September 14th to the 18th. Uh, and for more information, Cecilia's Samplers. com. <clears throat> uh, and then they have their Christmas format preview. This little guy is cute. And I like that one too. But see, I'm not really an ornament stitching type of person. At least not for myself. And then there's this one last little guy right here too. Citrus motifs. Got a full pattern here, and then you can just pull out a couple of them to do on the um, what is that perforated paper? Yeah, to do as magnets. Cool idea. And then we have garden puppy. And then we also have a garden kitty. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the web bonus is the garden kitty. You have to get that online. Go to justcrossstitch.com and log in using your subscriber email address or newsstand cover to download Garden Kitty, the companion piece to Garden Puppy. Then we have Patriotic Pinwheel Coaster. And then, I think this may be a little, no, it's not the last one. The Seasons in Chalk. Stars and Stripes. This is the actual stitched. For those of you who like doing the seasons in chalk, I'm not one of them. Celebration of Needlework. Stowe, Vermont. Stowe Flake Lodge. October 20th to the 23rd. With Jeanette Douglas Designs and Catherine Theron. Information and in e newsletter, celebration of nw.com. I don't know why I'm telling you guys about these things that are coming up. Charles Furby Sampler, circa 1860. And then I believe 
this movie the last nine. I think so. This is just advertisements. Yeah. And finally, we have the band four of their Hard Anger sampler. Which is, I think this one down here. This is one band one, band two, band three, band four. And then they have a bonus card anger table runner. So that's all for that one. Um so And there's the advertising on the back of the, the, the last page. The Mill Hill, Mill Hill chart board quartet. So, I'm just not crazy about the chart, chalkboard designs. It's just me. Then I got in a couple things from Lysia. Of course. It's been two weeks. How could I not get something from Lysia? Um, I'm a little bit disappointed in this one. Because I got this, I don't know if you can see it. I got this, and it's a little kit. It comes with the uh, with an even weave and some floss. It's supposed to come with a needle as well, but it's not in there. And the most important thing is the pattern's missing. I told the girl, and she was like, "Oh no, I'm sorry." I I can I'm gonna look around and see if it's in see if I can find it and then message me a couple days later I couldn't find it um this she did offer to refund me my credits I'm like it's only 400 credits I'm not worried about it which is literally about cents maybe less than five cents so I'm not I'm not complaining I told her it's fine I'll just have to look around and see if I can possibly find this somewhere but it's a cute little pattern with the birds birds on the branch um I guess I'm gonna keep looking I've tried doing a, a search for this brand and I get styles not companies so but I'll keep looking so that's that and then I got this one this is Lenart the lady in blue and there were a couple of other patterns that they had as well but this is the only one I really really I really really liked and I think I actually got that even weave that I started my um His name is Jesus Pattern Not. I think I actually got it for this. But I ended up using it. It's fine. I have um, some white linen that I can do this on. If I need to. But, um, there doesn't have much to it. Here's some of the other, other patterns that they have. Um, and they had, the other person, they had this one. And then they had this one as well. But this was the only one I liked. And you can get these. Um, the conversion rate for what I paid for this, and I went ahead and did the get it now price of about, I think it was like 50,000 credits, which at 10,000 per dollar, about five dollars. Cheapest I found this was actually on Etsy, I believe somebody had it for about twelve dollars, so I think I did pretty good. I'm getting this for about five dollars. Um, and I do want to start that. I think it's pretty. I find it interesting, and somebody can, somebody can educate me on something. This says on the inside. It says that their model stitch.
It says their model stitch was stitched on white 28 count Quaker cloth. One over two. And that's not that's not a mistake that I just said. One over two. How can you stitch one over two? Does that look like one over two? That that doesn't look like one over two to me. That's there's too much coverage there to be one over two. Regardless, I'm probably gonna do this on a thirty two count. If I thirty two count two over two. So um, and then the last thing I got from Listia, um, and I want to get the companion piece to this as well, Move this a little bit, is this one. It's uh, from Butternut Road. It's Spirit Dancer. And yeah, no, they have a thing on it to hold the pattern on there. Um, a Spirit Dancer. And you can get this on 1, 2, 3 stitch. Oops, sorry. Um, it was originally, I'm trying to see, this was copyright 1995, but you can still get it. There is a companion piece, it's called, um, I just, I just lost it, I just completely lost it. There is a companion piece to this. Um, it has a huge, it has a huge dream catcher on it, and it's called Earth Dancer, that's what it's called, sorry. Um, companion piece of this is called Earth Dancer. I think it's very pretty. These stitches, these stitches down here at the bottom where it's supposed to be a fringe, they worry me. I don't know why, they just worry me. But this does have some beads. Um, and why they're using Anchor, they have DMC for all these other colors, but then they're using Anchor white. I don't know why. Um, it does take some Mill Hill beads. It takes um, two Mill Hill treasures, uh, five of one and three of another. Uh, and then takes a Krennic, an Ultra Suede, and one watercolors, Karen watercolors. So this is going to be interesting. So got that one, and I do want to get to the companion piece eventually. And one, I'm, I'm wanting to stitch this on a neutral. Um, maybe not necessarily a neutral, but. I'm wanting to get a, a very large piece of a hand dyed, something like a neutral, and, and to stitch both of them on because I want them both to be on the same fabric, on the same, yeah, yeah, you get it. I want them to be on the same color fabric. So, um, that's Lysia, and finally. Y'all know what this is. This is Nifty Needle Nannies. My first ever order from Nifty Needle Nannies. And it's my first order from Nifty Needle Nannies because I won uh, one of her contests. She was having a contest <coughs> um, where she was posting some trivia questions and for different needle matters. She would post a minder. Uh, certain minders and a lot of them had to do with Doctor Who but a few of them had to do with other things as well but and she would post a trivia question and whoever the first person who got it right won that minder so one of the questions she asked um, posted cover these up posted this minder keep calm and basically run and I wasn't familiar with any of the older Doctor Who, but I asked my question. When the I think the the question had to do with which Doctor is most famous for running away from danger, or whatever the question was. 
And I asked my, I asked a friend of mine who was more familiar with the classic Doctor Who because I didn't, th I didn't think it had anything to do with the new Doctor Who. And so I asked him, and he said, he told me, um, the second Doctor was generally more known for running away, um, and so that was the answer that I put. And there was another lady that had commented like a couple of numbers in a row, and actually number the two was actually one of the numbers that she had guessed um, before uh, that she had posted was in the few minutes before I got an answer back from my friend and I said well I said my friend says number two but you know she had already guessed number two um, before I got an answer so why not, why not? Uh, and Julie actually said you know uh, well the, the other lady's like well I was just messing around with guessing all those numbers you know, it should go to the other, another person who guessed right. So I'm like, oh, that's awful nice of her, you know. Um, and so Julie gave it to me. So I won that minder, obviously. Keep calm and basically run. Um, but I noticed, I, I've been going back and watching Dr. Who again, and I noticed that Eleven actually says it in one of his, um, one of his, his actual, his first actual um adventure as Doctor Who and so it was the one with the prisoner zero. Yeah. That's all I have to But then I got the other then I went ahead and ordered these other two while I was there. Cause I didn't feel right. You know, just you know, I'd never ordered from her before and then here I am winning a minder. I thought it was only fair that I order a couple other ones. So I got the purple coffee mug, and then the cute little panda. So that's all. I know it's probably going to be a longer video. It's going to be a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. But yeah, that's all I have for today. And hopefully, I'll be back next week with a finish. If I can get the um, love and faith ones done. And I'm going to try to have an FFO. I might try to get my, um, I might try to get something else framed up. I don't know which one yet, but I'm going to try to get something framed up. So, yeah. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Hope y'all didn't miss me too much. And I, I don't know what I'm going to end up working on. I don't make plans. If I try to make plans, I don't stick with them. So, other than the love and faithfulness, trying to finish that up today, because I know it's only going to take a few hours to finish up. Um, if I work on it consistently, I know I could probably get it finished up in no time. Um, but other than that, I don't really have any plans. I'm just trying to work on what I work on. Maybe try to see if I can get something done on um, Say the Stitches. Who knows? It's a surprise to me. So that's it for me today. I guess I will see you guys next week. And have a great Stitchy day. Have a blessed day. Have a great Stitchy week. And I will see you guys later. Bye!